Hey everybody. Well, today is May 7th, 2019. Uh, 40 years ago today, I showed up in Palmdale, California for my first day on the railroad. Uh, back then, it was uh, Southern Pacific Railroad, not Union Pacific. We started at 7.30, not 7. And uh, we were working out of a leased warehouse on East 6th Street in uh, Palmdale because there wasn't enough room for all the people and all the equipment that we were gonna need to do the project we were doing. And I was hired as part of the group that installed the CTC, the Centralized Traffic Control, from Mojave to Colton. Back then it was the called the San Joaquin Division. And the San Joaquin Division went from, I believe it went from Madera to uh, a place called Highland out at the top of Cajon Pass. So we didn't actually go down into Colton. We only went to, to Highland. But anyway, uh, it's, been a, it's been a trip. It's been a good job. Uh, it's been a, I've worked my tail off. I remember the very first words my foreman said to us when we got out of the truck, uh, my first day of the job out at a place called Wash was everybody grab a shovel. And for the first year and a half I worked there, I worked my ass off. I did get the opportunity to run what was called a cable plow. It was a gigantic piece of equipment that uh, buried cable in the ground, uh, held four reels of cable, had a big old blade the cable went through and it buried it and tamped the ditch behind it and everything. It was a really cool piece of equipment. And uh, I got laid off in August of 1980 and I was actually laid off for three years. I didn't come back until January of 1984. And I came back to uh, Tulare, California. I worked up there for a few months and then bid a job in Tehachapi and started my job working on the mountain and out in the desert until uh, um, my job kept kind of sliding north until around uh, 2000. I pretty much was up in the valley after that from uh, Merced to Bakersfield. And as you all know, my job was abolished as a maintenance foreman in February, and I've been the Tehachapi maintainer ever since. Hasn't been as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's given me the opportunity to get back in shape. I actually have to do some work. It's not all that bad. It's given me some great opportunities to do some YouTube stuff. But uh, I'm standing here at the Tehachapi Loop. Got a UP train stop behind me. They get tracking time out all over the place, down the mountain, so... I'm not moving many trains today. But this is my 40th anniversary. It was nothing special to me. I went and had coffee with uh, Don and DJ, as I do most weekday mornings. Uh, got on the conference call. I didn't even tell anybody this is my 40th anniversary because I didn't think of it until I started getting some track and time uh, up in my attached me to do some work this morning and realized that this was the seventh. But anyway, it's been 40 years. Uh, my retirement is imminent. I will, August 30th will be my last day, and uh, I look forward to that. I'm, like I said, it's been a good job, but I'm ready to not do it anymore. I'm ready to not get up at 5 in the morning anymore. I'm ready to not have <laughs> cameras in my truck and computers telling people what time I do what. Still hasn't been a, but it's still a good job. It still pays well. I'm still treated relatively well. I don't expect to be patted on the back and Molly Collin told what a good boy I am. But uh, one of the other things about this job is uh, when I applied for the job, I saw the ad in Bakersfield, California, and my mom showed it to me because she wanted me to get a damn job. And uh, said hiring signalman. I didn't even know what a signalman was. I've mentioned that in a couple of other pieces I've done. But at the interview, uh, they explained to me what Sigelman did. I still didn't have a very good understanding of it, but I knew that it didn't have anything to do with trains or tracks. And uh, over the years, the railroad has invested a lot of time and money in my training. Uh, I've been all over the country to training classes, Houston, Salt Lake City, Chicago, Roseville, all over the place. And that's been pretty cool. I always tell people that I've never flown on my own dime. The railroad's flown me everywhere I've ever flown commercially. But uh, 
I took advantage of that training. Uh, I learned as much as I could, and when I got back out in the field, I applied that to my craft, and I've become a pretty good signalman. Uh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, people still call me for ask me questions about specific things, and not that I don't still have to call people sometimes. You never know everything. The job's constantly changing. The technology's constantly changing. And some of the people that I hired out with, uh, the, everyone that I hired out with is now retired. I'll, I'm the last of the Mohicans that are still here that hadn't retired yet. But a lot of those guys didn't uh, acclimate very well to those changes in technology. I did. Uh, didn't bother me a bit. It, I still don't know everything about it, but I didn't know everything about our whole relay logic system either. I just wanted everybody to think I did. But anyway, beautiful day here at Waylong. Uh, right at the end of the day, get ready to go home. My wife's going to make me something cool for dinner for my 40th anniversary. It's been, a, it's been a trip. This has been a very challenging and interesting job. It's been, it's been fun. My buddy Don and, always, Don and I always uh, talk about the good old days and how they really weren't that good. They were fun. We had a lot of fun, but we worked our asses off too. and That wasn't much fun, but it's, a, it's all behind us, that kind of work. Uh, we'll never have to do that kind of work again, and that's a good thing. No one will have to do that kind of work again. Even the new guys, they have better equipment, more equipment, more manpower, more money. And uh, it's a good thing. I don't, you know, we tell war stories about how hard we used to work, <clears throat> and, it, and they're true. But I'm glad nobody has to work like that. That, that, that was hard on my body. Uh, I'm showing the effects uh, as I approach 60. Uh, all my joints hurt all the time. but. That's all right, I'll get by that. I can still play golf. Hell, I may even start riding dirt bikes again. Who knows what I'll do. But, as I said, it's been a good job. It's been a challenge. Uh, 40 years. Uh, for you who are younger, uh, don't waste any time. You're gonna blink and you're gonna be 50. Your kids are gonna be grown. So, go have fun, enjoy your lives. Uh, don't save all your money till the day you retire because you know what you might not make it to retirement or you might not be able to do things you wanted to do in retirement as you as you have some money to do things I'm not saying blow all your money but as you have money to do things go do it go see the Grand Canyon go see Yellowstone uh, you know go to Hawaii or whatever whatever tickles your fancy try to get that done because I'm serious this I'll be 60 in August, on August 27th, and it feels like I just w went to work here a couple of weeks ago, and that's, that's a fact. So go enjoy your lives. Uh, enjoy your job. If you don't like your job, quit and go find something you do like. Uh, I always liked trains. I'm not a train fan. I never really was. I just thought trains were, I always thought they were cool. I still do. Uh, the, I, I've always liked the railroad, and I've and, and I've made a good career out of it, and I've enjoyed it. There have been times I've hated it, but one of the quickest ways to uh, make your life miserable is to convince yourself you hate your job. And if you hate it that bad, go find something that you like. Do that. Even if it pays a little less, you'll be happier. Uh, no one should spend a career in misery just because it pays well. Anyway, that's my advice, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. See you guys later.